Yeah, and maybe maybe it'd be helpful if we just took a step back a little bit to say a few words about the the Eastern Catholic Churches, maybe to put it in context. Yeah, that'd be if, helpful. That's for, okay. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So, um, so if we think about, I, probably the best way to is take a step back all the way to the time of Christ and the apostles. You know, our our Lord came to Earth. Uh, we have the advent of the Messiah. He establishes one holy Catholic and apostolic church uh, on the foundation of the apostles who uh, have 12 thrones, if you will, that his example in Matthew, uh, that, um, that he's, he's building a kingdom and, uh, and, and that kingdom is a church. So Jesus wasn't simply a philosopher. He wasn't coming to start a social movement. He was coming to establish a church. And that one holy Catholic and apostolic church uh, was gathered together in the upper room at Pentecost with the, the, the Virgin Mary, the Theotokos. The Holy Spirit descends upon them, and then we read in Acts chapter 2, verse 42, the life, the common life of that body is one uh, that abides in apostolic teaching, apostolic worship, and apostolic uh, leadership, or under apostolic leadership and fellowship. So with those dimensions of the belief in the one holy Catholic and apostolic church, the Holy Spirit then sends them forth over time to the nations, which was in response to the, to the commission that Christ had given right before the ascension, that, that they would go forth and make disciples of all the nations. So the apostles, obedient as they were uh, to the words of Christ and to the impetus of the, and the power of the Holy Spirit, went out and preached the gospel among the different nations, and as those, as that gospel took root, as it, uh, it was incarnated, if you will, in uh, in these di- among these different peoples, and we see this definitely in the New Testament period and beyond, uh, it it began to take on many of the wonderful, beautiful cultural, linguistic, uh, even to a certain extent philosophical, uh, legal, artistic expressions of that uh, that. Those peoples, um, and and so what you end up seeing is this beautiful mosaic that develops, where you have the shared faith, uh, the apostles' teaching, the shared worship of the apostolic worship under uh, apostolic leadership, under the succession of the apostles, and yet this beautiful diversity that emerges uh, with the different churches that are founded. Uh, one example that one author. Uh, the late Archbishop Joseph Raya uses is it's like a mosaic icon. You know, if you if you ever look in a mosaic icon, you've got different pieces of the icon that are all unique shapes, colors, uh, sometimes materials that are used, and yet all together, when you take a step back, they reveal the face of Christ to the world. And so that's the vocation of the church: diversity and unity, a church of churches. And so as the gospel takes root in these different cultures, you have different ritual traditions that develop. So you have um, different legal traditions, different uh, traditions of of celebration and worship, still the same seven sacramental mysteries, but yet celebrated in distinct ways. Uh, You have different theological traditions, different manners of expression. We see this especially in the – most especially in the three primary streams of, of Christianity, uh, patristic Christianity, the Syriac, the Greek, and the Latin traditions, um, and then uh, also uh, different spiritual traditions, different ways of expressing the piety of the people as they respond to the gospel. Um, so these um, bodies that were gathered weren't simply rites. Uh, the rite is the ritual tradition that's used by a particular church. So these were true churches. So the Catholic Church that mosaic icon revealing Christ to the world is actually uh, a church of churches, uh, all sharing one holy Catholic and apostolic faith, all in one communion, and yet expressing the, the great radiance of the gospel in, in diverse ways. So that, that, that in a nutshell is, uh, is a way of thinking about the Eastern Catholic churches. So my particular tradition, the Byzantine tradition, actually um, liturgically comes from Jerusalem, through Antioch to Constantinople, and then from Constantinople to Kiev, uh, right. in the in the evangelization by the by the brothers, uh, the Macedonian brothers Saint Cyril and Methodius. So, uh, so our tradition is con- uh, is from Constantinople, but uh, but it has a, a sort of a, a, a Slavic uh, mm-hmm. emphasis, yeah. uh, and again taking root in that culture and expressing it uh, through their own theology, spirituality, and liturgy. Excellent. That's was, a great, that's a great a, summary. It was, it was a long nutshell, but that, that was good. Yeah, that was great. That was wonderful. Very clear. Very clear. So, okay. All that being said, so we have. Yes. And I think another error that I hear people say um, amongst Catholics is, you know, they speak of Eastern rites. That's kind of been cleared yep. up uh, more and more lately because they're thinking of it solely in terms of liturgy, 
like, oh, when I go to their church, it's a different liturgy. But as you just mentioned, right. um, there's a patrimony and there's also, um, you know, law, you know, canon law mm -hmm. rules mm -hmm. that, that vary by, by patrimony, by, mm -hmm. by a jurisdiction. So yeah, it's really the Eastern churches and, and not is. even the Eastern church. You'll hear people say, you know, so it's, it's, it's a little complicated. To get it all is the, and all sometimes, the nuances. <laughs> well, sometimes it's a little confusing too because if you look at the codes of canon law, we have one code for one self-governing church, which is the Latin Church right. or the, the the Church of Rome, uh, and then one code for all the rest. So all all of the other Eastern churches, and so they assume well there must be two two churches, and it's 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 obviously much more diverse than that. I think. Uh, the reason why we have a single canon law for the Oriental churches, as they're, as they're sometimes called, is because it, for simplicity's sake, in terms of Rome's ability to to work with us uh, and and be in communion with us, and and much of it parallels what what's contained in the in the Latin code. Uh, but there are distinct rights that are within the, the different churches, and each church also can have its own particular law. Uh, so you've got the code of canon law, and then even in the code, it stipulates that every church can form its own particular law. You know, so for instance, the Byzantine Catholic Church, which is based in Pittsburgh, you know, we have our own particular law uh, that dictates such things as you know, even down to you know what clerics will wear, uh, you know, in uh, you know when in ministry or in liturgical service. But the rites themselves are really six distinct rites, if you will, or, or yeah, you want to call it rich, ritual those, families. Yeah. Yeah. So of course, the the one that's most familiar probably to your audience would be the 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 tradition, the Roman rite. Mm -hmm. uh, although even within the the Western tradition of the Church, as you know, there are a variety of of um, usages, I guess you would call them, but they are really rites. So you've got the Ambrosian, you've got the Gallican, you've got the Moser Arabic, um, and uh, you know these, and then of course the the Latin Serum, tradition, yeah. the Serum rite. Yes, mm -hmm. can't forget the Serum rite. And uh, and so those those are all you know again that's a little bit of diversity within the Western tradition, but then when you go to the East you have the uh, Antiochian West Syriac you've got the the East Syriac um, you've got the uh, oh gosh the Armenian uh, you've got you've got the the uh, Alexandrian which would in be inclusive yeah. of the Coptic and the and the Ethiopian yeah, you've got the Indian um, the Syro Malabar and the Syro Malabar, yeah. yeah. So it's fitting within that Syriac uh, tradition of, of in expressions, the Maronite, obviously another one. So so these are all again, it's very beautiful. And, and the great thing is, as a Catholic, I I have friends that like to call themselves, well, I'm Orthodox in communion with Rome. And I said, well, yes, that that's true. Our, we descend from Orthodox churches that eventually came into, back into communion with Rome. I said, but for me, it's not just about being Orthodox in communion with Rome. It's about being Orthodox in communion with Armenians, with mm -hmm. Ethiopians, with Coptics. It's the diversity of the Eastern traditions that if I were a Chalcedonian Orthodox Christian, yeah, you I would wouldn't, not be in communion with yeah, them. You would not be in communion with the Copts. No, I wouldn't. Yeah. Uh, and now, of course... We don't want to say that the Coptic Catholics are uh, the full representation of Coptic Christianity, but yeah. it is certainly an, a manifestation, an expression of that. And so I, I find that it's wonderful that any Catholic of any particular church can, can go to any Eastern Catholic liturgy uh, and receive communion and pray and be a part of that life. They can even join the parish. They don't have to formally transfer. This is all, mm -hmm. again, part of the beauty of our, our communion uh, together as churches. Yes, excellent. Great, great summary. I mean, if someone just had never heard of this and just listened to these 10 minutes, they just got an education. That's great. Glad I could be helpful. I, and it's something that we find actually it's really interesting as Eastern, Eastern Catholics uh, across the different churches, you know, we recognize that part of our vocation is to help express the fullness of Catholicity and help uh, share that with others who just may not be aware that we even exist uh, because we are small we're kind of mustard seed churches ourselves especially you know in the diaspora outside of our traditional territory so we we do see that as part of our vocation to help to help educate more on the breadth of catholicity yeah